everyone hope you're doing very well so today we're going to look at VFR approach and landing VFR means visual flight rules it means we've got good visual conditions where we can see the runway down there and we can land with normal VFR technique so first of all we need to approach so we're going to dive down from our flight level down to just above 1500 AGL feet and a speed down to between 250 and 300 knots as we approach the airfield for our initial. The first check that we need to do is our fuel balance. So we're going to go over to our fuel gauge here and check that we are within balance limits. We can tell that we are. If these needles were more divergent and there was a red tag available, then we would have to do something about it. And we've got that covered in our fuel management video. Next, landing lights. So we're going to check it's in the up position for landing. Just check it is. It is. Next, we're going to check our barometric altimeter. Several checks we need to do. First, we need to check that our reading here is the same as reading on our hards, which is 7400, and we've got 7400 there. Next, we need to check that our electrical and the pneumatic variations of this altimeter are within limits. So we're just going to level out quickly. Left click electric, right click pneumatic, and we're just about within 75 feet limit there. Next, we're going to set our QFE. We would have contacted the runway, uh, the ATC, sorry, to get QFE, but we're not doing comms today. And the QFE should be 29.92 for this airfield. Essentially, it's going to zero us to the airfield or very close to it. Next, we have to do our pre-landing attitude references. We have to make sure that everything is agreed. Our ADI, make sure that is matching with our S, with our secondary, and make sure that is matching with our HUD. Just a basic check before landing. Next is our anti-ice switch. We just need to set it as desired for the conditions and we're in auto at the moment and that's fine. So we're gonna work our way down to speed for our initial. So we've worked our way down to 2000 feet AGL and 270 knots. First of all, let's talk about the instruments that we're gonna be using or the main instruments we're gonna be using. Our airspeed there, calibrated airspeed knots. Our path marker there, that shows us where our aircraft is actually traveling. Two, our pitch indicator, so we've got minus five degrees there, minus 10 degrees there, plus five degrees there, plus 10 degrees up about there, and our boresight cross there, our barometric altimeter. We will have an angle of attack error bracket that shows on the screen when we're slower and we're in landing configuration. We will stop it at that point and go through it. And we'll also go through the angle of attack indexer there. We will perform standard Grim Reaper's circuit. All Grim Reaper's circuit are left hand. That means we approach on the dead side of the runway, which is, in this case, going to be the right side. We will approach between 250 and 300 calibrated knots. We'll work our way down to a circuit height altitude of AGL 1500. We will break across the runway at our designated point. Then in our downwind, if you follow my kind of virtual cursor here, the idea will be able to get on speed as it's known which means getting the aircraft configured for landing first air brakes out second if required second landing gear out then achieving a speed that gets you on speed that means that we're going to get to a speed where we are at the correct angle of attack for landing of between 11 and 13 degrees we will use the angle of attack indexer and the error bracket to do that which we'll look at when we're on our downwind we will then maintain that speed and that angle of attack for the rest of the flight until touchdown where we will need to flare. After our base turn into the final approach, we will have a path marker aiming for the threshold of the runway. A few tens of feet before touchdown, we will flare up with back stick, taking care not to exceed 15 degrees. So our bore sight here does not want to agree, uh, exceed 15 degrees up there where we risk tail strike. Once flared and we meet the ground, we will keep our nose up again, careful not to go above 15 degrees for maximum aero braking. When we run out of lift and the nose drops, we will then slowly pull to full aft stick, maximum deflection with the stabilizers for max aero braking. Below 100 knots, we can also dab wheel brake to slow down. And below about 50 knots, it's gonna be safe to turn on the nose wheel steering with the nose wheel steering button. So we're passing in the initial point now on the dead side of the runway. Lead will brake when he's ready to brake. Trap in formation. Shooting for 250 to 300 knots. Okay, report break. Cap break. 
Low throttle now, we want to bring the speed down, sub 250 so we can get our gear down. We want to keep our path marker on the horizon line so we can maintain our circuit altitude of 1500 AGL roughly. Quite a wide turn. We're going to roll out, level with the runway on the downwind. Gear can come down now. The task now is to get on speed. That means getting at the correct speed that will attain the correct angle of attack for landing. We'll talk about that as soon as I level out. We will need lots of trim added at this point, lots of up trim, to ensure that we compensate for our on speed configuration. So I'm going to pause now. So we've got two tools for ensuring that we are on speed. So don't worry about the actual speed per se. That will be ensured that it's correct by the on speed system. We have an angle of attack error bracket here. We have to ensure our path marker here maintains within the error bracket here, ideally at the center. We have the essentially the same tool, but displayed differently, the angle of attack indexer here. What we want to see is a center green circle here. If we get that, then we are at the correct angle of attack for landing, 11 to 13 degrees. If we have this chevron here, we are too fast, our angle of attack is too low. Opposite, red chevron here, our angle of attack is too high, we are too slow. So we want to neutralize this, neutralize this, we're going to do that and keep that neutralized all the way until we're just about to touch down, at which point we flare where we will break our on speed. Okay, so we're going to concentrate that, mainly using trim and our throttle. Dab of air brake if we need it. Lots of trim at this point. Keep looking over our left shoulder to that ensure that we are traveling parallel to the runway and that we can judge our base point, our base turn point. We're now pretty much on speed. We just need to retrim because we're sinking a little low. Move the uh, seat up. The airport's tricky base. Roger. I'm, I've come slightly askew to the runway here. It's just uh, difficult to do when you're talking. Happy with my on speed. Double check my gear, it's all good. Okay, cap is now turning base. To maintain on speed on this base turn, we need a little extra throttle. It's just how the aircraft works. And possibly a little extra up trim. We'll need to cancel that extra throttle and cancel that up trim once we complete our base turn. Lots of looking over the shoulder. We want to complete our base turn in line with the runway, obviously. We can start losing a little altitude here as well. So our path marker can drop below the horizon line, however, not too far. Rest the turn slightly. Using attitude nicely. Okay. Speed up turn here just to make sure we come off base turn at the right place. That's looking about right. Right, now concentrate on oh, moving the path marker down to the threshold of the runway while maintaining our on speed. A little more power, a little more trim. Ideally, we want neutral stick, but just using trim. I've got some bad air at the moment, but I think it should be okay now that we're fine. Okay, we're perfectly on speed, slightly slow, a bit more power. Again, punch to the threshold, retrim down. everything maintained we're slightly off speed there down with the speed a little dab of air brake we need it back on speed get ready for flare careful not to over flare and flare oops a little rough there and I got a bounce and that's my fault for um, uh, just my flare wasn't too good. Right, uh, maintain nose in the air to 100 knots. And we're going to work to max deflection, stabilize, uh, stabilize the deflection now. And we can dab the wheel brake. Nose will steering come on below about 50. How was your landing, RC? Good. Okay, nose will steering on control of the jet so quick debrief there 
The circuit was pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. No major deviations anywhere. The, the only bit where I really cocked up was the flare. I flared too, uh, I flared too late and I slammed into the runway. My velocity was too high. Not enough to do any gear damage, but it caused a bounce. So basically the vertical velocity, um, the sync rate if you like, was too high as I impacted the tarmac. It caused me to bounce and then the plane basically just stalled into the runway. You know, it was all just about within limits, but it would be considered an ugly landing. If I had uh, flared just a little bit earlier, and so my vertical velocity was lower when I touched the ground, it would have settled into the ground perfectly. So that's how I should have done it. The speed brakes after your nose wheel touches down. Roger. Yeah, so that's one thing I forgot. We can go, well, we should go full speed brakes after the nose wheel touches down. I forgot because I was in such a panic because of my bounce. So full speed brakes after the nose wheel touches down. Otherwise, I hope that helps and see you later.